morning everyone uh happy monday 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 all right so <laughs> crazy morning this morning crazy morning but i'll get through it i'll get through it um actually it's already over so there you have it so uh before i begin i'm going to redo or add um an, an alternate ending to the last video it's really not an alternate ending but the last part of the video didn't um, make it to the, the merging of the videos or whatever, so it, it, it's not on there, so I have to redo it. Since I already deleted it, I have to uh, actually redo that part. Uh, so I will do that. If you can't see it right now. It's, it's, I took it off, but uh, I'll put it back up uh, with the ending. So I just wanted to let you know that because it ended abruptly. And I didn't realize it until a friend of mine uh, let me know. I thought the time looked different, but I was like, eh. <laughs> so, there you have it. So, <clears throat> today I'm going to talk about presents. Um, hopefully this won't, this won't go uh, too long. But uh, So, presents. What is presents? Um, presents is, it's another principle. Um... So presence is the principle that for truth to be present and absorbed by the soul, love must also be present. Um, so it's the presence of love along with truth. That's what presence is. Um, so if someone is, say, screaming the truth at you, it's going to be very difficult for you or any soul to accept it. It's going to be very difficult to accept that. very difficult for anyone to absorb truth that someone is screaming it out them. <clears throat> That's not a problem. Um, so, the, the thing is, like, the soul is able to feel when love is an underlying intention in the discovery of truth. So, that's what we're here to do, to, um, well, that's not the main reason, but what we're looking for is to discover truth. That's what we're trying to discover. And we're trying to sift through all the, the lies or the errors that exist because they exist as well as the truth. So we're always sifting and sorting through all kinds of things in order to find the truth. Um, ultimately, there's only, an abs there's only one truth. There's only an absolute truth. But there's many things that we hold as beliefs that are in error they're not absolute truths, but they're things that we believe to be true. And this is what that term, uh, personal truths, comes from. But it's, the, the, they're, you know, the thing is, most most of us hold errors. They We hold things that are not absolute truths, and there are absolute truths. So, this whole thing about there not being any absolute truth, there's no one truth, everybody has their own personal truth, that is that is incorrect. There, there are absolute truths out there. There, there are benchmarks, and love is one of them. Love is an absolute truth. You have love, and then you have everything else. That is, that's the thing. Is there's only love. There's only God, the infinite Creator, which is love, and that is all that exists. And everything that is from that is what is true, what is absolute. Everything else is an error. So. The creator is a creator, and it is what it is. And all of its, whatever it is, it is what it is. Period. So, it's a benchmark. And so what we have are ideas and concepts and, and theories about things. Those are errors if it is not the absolute truth, if it is not the truth of the creator. This is what I'm talking about. There are absolute truths, but what many people hold are errors, which they call personal truths. But it's really easy to find out which beliefs are 
absolute truth. If you use love, if you use love as a benchmark, God being the benchmark, this is what I'm saying. So you don't have to acknowledge the word God, but you know what love is. You know what love is. You know what unloving things are. You know what unloving actions are. Um, so it's really easy to figure this stuff out. It's not difficult at all because we know through experience what is loving and what is unloving. All right. So the soul can also feel when the underlying intention is not of love, but a manipulation of truth. So there are times when you are listening to someone and they're, they're, what they're saying is they claim to be telling you the truth and something just in you says something's not right about this. Just something's not right. That is your soul feeling that something isn't right. You may not, and that's the thing, you may not intellectually know why it's not right, but there's a feeling that says something isn't right. And this is the soul feeling the underlying intention of what's being said. So, there are many times, and it's done through religion, it's done through government, where they will give you truth, but they're manipulating it in order to get you to do something or believe a certain way. The soul can feel that too, but only if presence is present. So, as long meaning love. So, as long as love is present, the soul will be able to determine what is authentic and what is not, what is truth and what is error. And if you're not connected to this aspect of who you are, then you're going to have a very difficult time. And you will totally rely on intellectual information and not your soul. All right? So, like I just said, if you're if you're sensitive to presence of love, you'll be able to easily determine when a person is out of harmony with love. So truth probably is so the truth that they're probably um, I'm sorry. The truth <laughs> what they're explaining to you or information they're giving to you as truth probably isn't truth or absolute truth. So it's only their version of of what they claim to be truth and it's an error. So if someone is doesn't if you feel that the person isn't being or doesn't have love, then most likely what they're sharing is an absolute truth. Because absolute truth can only be what is going on like there was no reason for you to get in front of me like that. <laughs> but we talked about this then we <laughs> people are getting in my way. <laughs> Whatever, okay, okay. <laughs> um, all right, so. Oh my gosh, where was I? Okay, so having presence within ourselves, have, or the presence of love within ourselves, it helps us understand who we should listen to. So. We should always listen to people who want to help us grow. Who want to see your soul grow. Who have a feeling of Lord of love towards your soul. These are the people we want to listen to. Even if it's a confronting, we still want to listen to them if they have love for our soul. If they have love in, in terms of wanting our soul or desiring or helping us to expand our soul in love. These are the people we should listen to. Even though some of the things that they may be saying are confronting to us. Because they have nothing but love for us. And in, in having that love, they will expose some of the things that we hold within us that are unloving. And that's the part that I'm talking about that is confronting. Um, yeah, I, I, I have many conversations with people all the time. And when I'm talking to them about certain things, I can tell when, when, they're, when they feel they're being confronted. And it's uneasy for them. And sometimes they'll sit with it and they're like, wow, gosh, that's so right. And, you know, just 
oh, because they realize it. They realize something within themselves for the first time. And sometimes it's not for the first time. They they've they noticed it before, but they just dismissed it. Um, and then some people just outright deny it because they still want to keep it hidden. And they certainly don't want anyone else to, to know about it. So when I'm having discussions, like anytime I'm having a discussion with anyone about themselves or myself, but generally it's about themselves because they're asking questions, um, I'm, I'm truthful about it. I mean, on a soul level, that's where I go. And I don't, I don't beat around the bush. I just give it to you straight. And it's hard for people to accept. But I have nothing but love for them and their soul. I know that they have a soul. Which is why I'm telling them what I'm telling them. Their soul is damaged. And so when they acknowledge that damage, they don't want to, um, to uh, sit with it and feel it because it's painful. But that's the whole, that's, that's the whole reason why, <laughs> this is the whole reason why they ask questions about themselves on a soul level. They want to know why, and then when I tell them why, they're like, oh, okay, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> it's, it's kind of comical and it's sad at the same time, because people ask these questions about themselves, and then when they get the answer, they don't like the answer. And then they shove it back down and they don't deal with it. And whatever problems that were being experienced from that error will continue to be experienced. I mean, it's sad to see them go through that, but that's just something that they're choosing to um, experience. And I don't have any control over that. I don't even want control over that. That's too much. That's too much. <laughs> that's too much. <laughs> um... So yeah, we should always listen to people who have love for for us, who care about us, our well-being. Um, yeah, and I, I do not mean these people who, are, who want to tell you everything that you want to hear so that you feel good. That's not love. That is not love. I'm talking about someone who's going to hold love for you and tell you the truth. These are the people you should listen to. But don't. I usually, I mean, look. What we don't want to do, I should say, is listen to people who tell you a heap of truth, but they do it without the presence of love. That's what we don't want to do. And that's what most people do. Um, and the reason, I mean, the reason why this is important is because generally if someone is telling you truth, and they don't have love, with, they don't have the presence of love, there's an ulterior motive involved. There is an ulterior motive involved, and you'll be able to feel it if you have the presence of love. If you don't have the presence of love, then you will not be able to sense that there is an ulter ulterior motive present. This is very important, because this is how you use discernment. But and the reason why, and I, I, don't, I don't think I talked about discernment, but I've mentioned it several times in my videos. Um, when you have the presence of love, which is the energy of source, God, the creator, or whatever you want to call it, you then have a power that people who don't possess the presence of love have. So you have a power that they don't have. It is a power. It's a very important power. We don't see it as powers. I think mean, I think most people on this planet see powers as as in some kind of science fiction movies, you know, or whatever. But the presence of love is a power. And it allows you to know things. It allows you to have discernment. So if you have the presence of love, it's very difficult to be misled because you have the power of love, meaning you have the power of discerning what truth is because love is truth. Love is absolute truth. And so I'm not saying if you hold love, then you know everything. No, if you hold love and you're listening to someone, it depends on what you have love in because there's so many different topics and subjects. Um, in our lives, come on, Jesus Christ. 
<coughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> this car is cracking me up because it's like <laughs> you try like 80 times to get in there. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that was so funny to me. <laughs> that was too much. All right. Um. <laughs> It looked like some cartoon. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> um, so if you have presence, um, you have a power. You have love. You have a power. And it's an, it's an important one. And most people don't have this. If they had it, they wouldn't be misled at all. Because they would know, they would be able to feel it. Not only would they feel it, they would trust their, their soul's feeling. But this love has to be within the soul. It cannot be in the, it, it can't be this uh, intellectual thing. Like, oh yeah, I'm loving, I'm loving, I'm loving. No, this must be within your soul. Then you have to trust your soul. Um, the feelings that it gets. <clears throat> and most times we ignore that. We ignore the feelings that we have. Um, so, so the reason why this is important um, is because love is the absolute factor of the soul. It's so it's the whole reason why we are here. So, meaning the soul, we are the soul. We are not the physical body. We are not the spirit body. We are the soul, and that's the reason why the soul is here to have these experiences. It's to expand in love. That's it. Expand in love. Because love is the only real thing. It's the only absolute thing. It's the only truth. The only absolute truth is love. All the experiences that we have are either in love or out of love. So what we want to do is expand our souls. And the way we expand our souls is through love. The soul will contract if we accept things that are opposite of love. So if love is present, absorb it. If it's not, like if I'm saying if, if you're talking to someone and love is present within that person, absorb it. Absorb what they're saying. But if it's not present, what are you doing, sir? Um... If it's not present, then be very selective about what you absorb. The ulterior motive will damage your soul. And the, at some point, ulterior motives come out. And I have a, a friend who has gone through this. And for years, I, I don't know, was it 14 or 15 years, um, he had a friend. And they've been friends since they were kids. And um, he thought that this, he thought that the person was his friend. He thought the person was being honest with him um, and had care and concern for him. And this was not the case. The entire time, the entire time, that friend or that person that he thought was a friend had ulterior motives. The entire time. So he was accepting everything and anything his friend was saying to him. This is this is like what people consider best friends. This is how close they were. They're like brothers. <clears throat> and this person turned out to be a very evil person. Very, very dark. Very, very dark. Very manipulative. Uh, lied all the time, but presented it as truth. And sometimes would use truth in order to get uh, my friend to believe certain things. This is what I'm talking about. They will use truth, but they will manipulate it. They will use it to their advantage. And that advantage is the ulterior motive. Now, when this person found out, when my friend found out what was really going on, all of those years, it hurt. And it's a pain that is so deep because it's been going on for so long. And this is what I mean. That person's soul is damaged. 
there's a great deal of pain there. And it's, it's very difficult for that person to get over it because of how long it's been going on. And all the times that, oh my gosh, that person has based life decisions on what was said by that person. This is what I mean. That if you're not selective about what you absorb, the ulterior motive will damage your soul. So that person's ulterior motive, oh, there's a husky, beautiful, beautiful husky, looks just like Bella, but that's a male. And his ding dong is sticking out. <laughs> oh, how funny. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it's very um, important to be selective about what you absorb. This is why if you feel that someone is unloving, do not accept what they have for you. Because at some point, it will be exposed and your soul will be damaged because of it. If you use that information and you base decisions off of what has been told to you and it wasn't in love, it's going to cause some pain. It's going to call, and that pain is damage to the soul. That's what that is. All pain results from a damaged soul. That's what that is. So anytime you have pain, it's it's damage to the soul or damage that has taken place within the soul I should say um, yeah and so like I said he, he it's very difficult for him to get over this because he's been betrayed and this betrayal ugh, betrayal is uh, you know when you have trust when you put trust in someone you, you there's a part of you that you are trusting with that person and it takes a great deal for someone to do that we don't just trust anyone I'm not going to say we don't but most, some people don't <laughs> some people do trust people with anything and everything but if they do that then they are completely detached from themselves completely they live only in the head and they want people to be nice so they will trust them. And this is this is going on right now with the new age thing. They're they're um, talking about love. Um, oh, just be loving, just love and love. And so they want to trust everyone, and they feel if they trust everyone, then they'll get trust in return. And then when they get burned, they they're angry. <laughs> and it's like because they didn't have the presence of love. And this is, this is the thing. Love is not intellectual. It's not intellectual. It's a soul-based process. It's a soul-based emotion, feeling. It's part, the heart is part of the soul. Love is part of the soul, not the mind. So, when you, when you're experiencing love, I lost my train of thought and I don't know why. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at anything. Um, oh, the new age thing. So, people right now are, are everything is about love and just love your neighbor. And yes, this is true. You can have love for your neighbor. Absolutely. But that does not mean that you cannot notice or be aware that someone is unloving. You can be loving towards them. Absolutely. You can do loving things. You can hold love in your heart. You can... You crazy little woman. Um, so, <clears throat> you, can, you can hold love for someone, but that doesn't mean that you have to be so ignorant, so gullible, where you're going to allow yourself to be abused. Now, the thing is, you wouldn't even allow this to happen if you had the presence of love. If you had the presence of love, then you would not accept anything from anyone who was unloving. There are many people who I know who are unloving people. Now, they pretend to be nice. Yes, they do do this. And I haven't, they don't know. They don't know that I know this or think this of them. 
but I can tell. I know it. I know it because of their actions towards other people. <clears throat> I know this by the manipulation uh, that they carry out. So I'm very selective about what I receive, or shall I say absorb, from those people. Now I can uh, observe, I can uh, choose what to pick out, I can learn from that, from, from that perspective, but to, look, you know what, this is too much, this is too much, too much, too much. Um, <clears throat> but I don't have to absorb everything that is coming from them. And there's times we'll have conversations and I'm like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Nope, and I have to use discernment. I have to use it. But the only reason why I can pick that out is because I have the presence of love. Now, if you have, if you're friends with someone, this video is gonna be longer than I expected, uh, than I wanted it to. But if you have friends, if you're friends with whomever, whatever, you have your little circle of friends, and there isn't any presence of love, you're going to take what they say as truth. And you're gonna base decisions off of that information. And then later on, you're gonna be upset when it's exposed. And this is what I'm talking about. Because there wasn't any love present when they were given the information. Now, <clears throat> the reason why this is, oh, I could have but I won't. <laughs> I could have made it, but I'm not going to do it. Um, I need to get over, but... Uh... Okay, so the reason why this is important is because right now, man is being misled by, by dark forces. And they're, meaning they're being influenced by both physical and non-physical. Um, these dark forces, there are the reflections of the intellectual and emotional aspects of people on earth and in the spirit world. So there are people who are in dark places, they have darkness within their soul, and so they're going to do things in order to get what they want, and these are the ulterior motives. And so they will tell you many different things in order to mislead you, but the only reason why they're doing that is to get you to do or think a certain way for their benefit. So if you have the presence of love within yourself, you would not fall for this. You would know that, hey, what you're saying is unloving. Uh-oh. All right, people, let's get it together, get it together. You know what? I'm not dealing with you either. <clears throat> um... You can use it just you have love within your in, within yourself, and so you'll be able to determine if someone holds love within themselves or they don't, and that will affect the information that is being absorbed by the soul. So, and so, like, let's say, like my, we'll use my my friend, the one that I just mentioned a, a moment ago. <clears throat> we'll use him as an example, and then I'll use myself. Um, for the contrast. So here he has um, a friend who has fed him misinformation on purpose. Are those my tires making that noise? I mean, the weird noise. Um, he has a. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> he has received misinformation from this. Uh, so-called friend of his and his for a, a good majority of his life he has um, based decisions off of that off of those lies those what he thought were truths were actually errors and um, this causes him pain now to contrast that my mother has told me things that were not true but she told them to me as if they were truths and she also believed that they were true 
And so they were told in love, like the reason why she shared some of these things is because she loved me. She had love in her heart and she wanted to express that to me and share this information with me. Well, when I learned the truth of those things, they did not damage my soul. I, I don't feel any kind of way about those things. Whereas she has told me lies on purpose. And that part is what causes me to have emotional, that which I'm sorry, which caused me to have an emotional injury. Because it was done without love. And this is, this is the difference. When you absorb something, when you absorb truth or error, it doesn't matter which one it is. If you absorb truth or error without love, it can damage your soul. If you absorb truth or error from someone who holds love within them, who has the presence of love within them, it will not damage your soul. The soul knows, this is the thing, the mind may not get this, but the soul knows. The soul knows. So all the things that my mother has told me in love, they have not created any kind of damage in my soul. I feel no type of way about it. She just shared information and the information was incorrect. She thought it was and she did it in love. But the people who, or but when she purposely uh, told me things that when, and she didn't have the presence of love on that topic or for that situation, that experience, then it caused me pain because she betrayed me on purpose. This is the emotional injury that was created from that lack of love. But when you have it, it doesn't do that. This is why I say when you absorb information from someone, where's the little circles? Oh, damn, I didn't make it in time. Jason, if you watch the video, you would <laughs> probably laughing at me. Um, so this is a difference, people. This is a difference. So those who have love for you and hold love in their hearts for you, and absorb what they have to say, truth or error. Now, if you have the presence of love within yourself, then you, you'll automatically know what is true and what is not. But if you don't, if, you only, if you're only operating from an intellectual standpoint, because there's some people who listen to me and they, they just accept it, but they know that I have love for them in their soul. They know that I have it within myself, the presence of love within myself. Now, they don't know that this is what it's called until they listen to the video, but they listen to what I have to say because they know where I'm coming from. Now, if later on they found they find out that what I'm saying is is not an absolute truth, then but the things that I'm talking about are absolute truth. But if for some reason they they whatever during their on their journey, their soul journey, they find out that it was an error, the information that I was sharing was an error, they're not going to have an emotional injury from it. Because it wasn't done outside of love it was done with the presence of love all right so and the, so the people who like I, I mentioned the, um, these dark uh, forces um, whether it be physical or non-physical the reason why this is happening is because they don't understand the principle of presence they don't understand the the the, pres the principle of the of love being present and so if an unloving if an unloving person tells the truth and we allow those truths to be absorbed and they're really errors, there's an increase in further damage in the soul. And so this this it, this stuff is so important. Like everything that I'm talking about is so important because it's how it's how you absorb information, it's how you take in information, it's how you process information on a soul level. Because when you do this on a soul level, it affects everything that you do. Your choices, your beliefs, your thoughts, everything. This is why it's so important to know how you operate as a soul. If you don't know this, then you fall for all kinds of stuff and then you end up suffering the consequences from it. And then you, you're dealing with these damaged, uh, these emotional injuries that are within you. 
and it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. Um, so I'll continue and I'll give you a better view <laughs> than the hood <laughs> when I uh, come back, all right? <laughs> See you in a bit. All right, I am back. Good afternoon. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Like split second. Good afternoon. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, okay, so I'm talking about resistance, uh, and I don't know where I left off, um, but I do know I want to say that the reason for all of this, the reason why I should say this is important, or everything is important reason why this is important um, is because this is all about the soul's progression and love. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing all of this. To expand the soul's progression and love. So the soul can expand and the only way the soul can expand is through love. That's it. That's the only way the soul can do this is through love. That's the only thing the soul is here for, to experience love. And any time that the soul experiences anything outside of love, it feels pain. And that pain is to let you know that that's not the direction that it should be moving to or moving in and to change course. That's why, that's what all this is for. So anytime you feel pain, it's to let you know to change course. That's it. That's it. Um, so when we know, like I was talking about presence, uh, presence when we know, um, when we, excuse me, um, if we know, I should say, if we know about presence, then what we, I guess I should say, if we know that presence has to be present, or love has to be present in order for truth to be absorbed, then what we do is we start creating environments of love around us. So, I, since I know this, I make it a point to create a loving environment for myself and meaning the people that I associate with my home environment all of this so whatever is my environment I look to create a sense of love within it so I make sure that love is surrounding me and so if I'm home see my home and it's funny because my friend asked me or a friend of mine asked me um, about a week ago or so what 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 home meant to me and so I gave some some examples or phrases or words of what my home or a home means and I listed all the things that I created like my home is my creation so just like your home is your creation and so one of some of the things that i told him were um secure comfortable safe serene um relaxing all of these things and i really didn't think about it um i felt it like when i'm home i feel those things so that's why i like being home so much <laughs> not because i like avoiding people but because I love my environment, it feels really good to me. It's very tranquil, it's serene, it's safe. It's, it's just all of those things. It's, it's comfort, um, and that's why I like getting home. Like, I, I wanna dash home as soon as I get off of work. <laughs> so, it's, you you know, you start to create these, these, envir these environments um, around you. If you know that this is what is needed in order for truth to be absorbed, then you start creating these environments. Um, so if your environment is chaotic, then 
it's not going to be too likely that you're going to be able to absorb truth um, in an environment like that. Um, because love isn't present. If you're uncomfortable in your environment, then you leave yourself open to attracting um, unloving events, I should say. So it's really important to know that this, in order for truth to be absorbed, then you need to provide a loving environment. And you'll start creating this as you, as you move forward, as you create self-love. You'll start this, you'll see this change within you. Um, so <clears throat> what, what you're doing is you're creating a, a safe environment. So if love isn't present, then it's not a safe environment. And I think that's pretty obvious. If you're around people who are unloving, then it's not a safe environment. If you feel you always have to be on guard, then obviously you're not in a safe environment. If you're afraid to speak whatever it is that is in your soul, then you're not in a safe environment to do so. And you know you're not in a safe environment to do so, which is why you won't speak what's in your soul. If you're closed off and you're wondering, hey, you know, well, I don't want to say this because they're going to laugh at me. Or I don't want to say this because they're going to ridicule me. I don't want to say this because of what they may think. I don't want to say this because of what I may not get. All these things, these are not safe environments. If you were in a safe environment, you would be able to talk about whatever it is you want to talk about without any uh, feeling of uh, repercussions from it. Yep, that easy. Are they on the phone? What are you doing? What are you, do you have a signal? Oh, Jesus Christ. Look, I don't know. <laughs> this is too much. What is... Oh, this is too much going on. Oh, my Lord. Just let me get a red light so I can sit here. There we go. Because you guys are doing too much right now. And why is his head in the clouds? Look how high he's sitting. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that man was, he had his seat so high. He had, he was trying to look at some girl crossing the street. He had to bend down and, and, <laughs> Just to see someone crossing the street. His head was in the clouds. Oh my gosh. Let me put my seat down. Just in case I look like that. <laughs> okay. So if love is absent. Then it's an unsafe environment. Um, and that's. And that's. And that's whether or not truth is present. Look at this person. They trying to race in the Subaru. Why are you racing in the Subaru? Um, so, so you, you want to be in a safe environment where you're able to speak freely. And if you have people in your life where you cannot speak freely how you feel about things, that's, that's an issue. That's a huge issue. Because by using your free will, you're choosing to do this. Do you know those people that you have in your life that you just feel you can't talk to or you can't say things um, or talk to them about certain things? Now ask yourself, ask yourself this question. If a friend is supposed to be someone who you can talk to freely about anything and everything, then why would you have someone around that you can't talk to like that. What is it within you that is allowing yourself to keep someone around that keeps you shut down and suppressed? Because that's what you're doing. You're suppressing yourself when other people or when certain people are around. Because you don't feel you can express yourself with them. Ask yourself why that is. Because that's what you're doing. You're choosing to suppress yourself for a reason. So you have to ask yourself, what reason is that? What reason is present that you're willing to suppress yourself? The expression of your soul? Yeah, ask yourself that question. 
That's a really important question. What are you, ex you what are you exchanging for your 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 happiness, your freedom? It's an exchange for something. It definitely is an exchange for something. Now that's that's pretty deep. When you start asking yourself, what are you exchanging your your happiness for? Huh. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so <clears throat> so um so people like I for for myself, um since I, I you know I do these videos, I get people who ask me questions about themselves, about their soul, about problems that they're having in their life in terms of why they're happening. Um and some people are really receptive to the information and others are resistant to it. So, to the point where they become unloving. So, there's been times where people say, well, you don't know what you're talking about, da, 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 and that's because they don't want to admit the information that I'm bringing forward about them. And so this is why they become unloving. So, generally what happens is I stop talking. And I generally don't talk to them anymore about personal matters because though they're they're pretending like they want to know the answers to these things, what they really want to know is what they want to hear. They don't want to know anything. They just want to hear what they already believe to be. So I generally don't even engage in conversations like that after a while. And now I can tell... Before I would just do it, I was like, okay, I'm just, I need to be helpful, you know, because I have this information, I understand it, I understand people, but now I don't even, there's some people I just refuse to engage with, because I already know that they're not asking from a place of wanting to understand themselves or improve themselves. So, here's the thing, if love isn't present, what's the point of discussing the truth? So, if someone's becoming unloving towards me because I'm speaking the truth, one ha you have to understand in order for truth to be absorbed, there has to be love on both ends. Both from the, from the person who's given the information and the receiver of that information. If love isn't present, what's the point of discussing the truth? If it's not going to be absorbed and, it's, and the person is going to be resistant of that truth, What's the point of discussing it? So when I say I stop talking and I just don't engage with people, it's not that I'm being an asshole. It's just I understand the process. So instead of wasting my time and wasting their time, I just don't engage in it anymore. What is the point? And why am I going to put myself in a position where people are going to become unloving to me because they're in denial of whatever it is they're in denial of? You understand? So I'm not trying to be a mean guy. I'm just aware of how this operates and I understand that they fully don't understand how this works. So I can't be angry at them. And I can't, if, if I were to be angry, it would only be with myself because I know better. <laughs> because I know better. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so yes, love must be present for both parties in order for truth to be absorbed. So if someone's resistant, it's not going to be absorbed. And so it just defeats the whole purpose of speaking the truth. You speak truth so it's absorbed. Why else would you want to hear truth? Why else would you want to speak about truth? Only to be absorbed. So if somebody is resistant, what's the point? What's the point if they're resistant to truth? What they're open to are lies, and I don't go there. I'm not with that. It's not happening. I it, it, look. People do this all the all the time. This is this is what many people believe to be friendship. People telling them what they want to hear in a relationship. If, if they're having relationship problems. 
someone will say, oh, you know, that person, blah, blah, blah. And then they want their friend to say, yeah, that person is an a-hole. And they're just, you know, they're this and they're that. And it's not your fault and, and whatever. Well, if somebody, <laughs> I've had this happen. Well, people try to talk to me about uh, a failing relationship. And they tell me what happened. And I tell them exactly <laughs> like their error in the whole situation, like their part in it, not absolving the other person from any wrongdoing, but I point out like, this is why this is happening and there is some accountability. They don't like that and they will stop talking to me. I get, oh my God, they will just stop talking to me. And that's fine. I have no problem with that. People come and go, but I know that they're not leaving because I'm being rude. They're leaving because I'm being truthful. That's it. And I stand in my truth. That's it. And if they didn't want to hear the truth, then they shouldn't have asked me the question. If they wanted, they, look, they must not know me very well then. <laughs> because I am not one to tell you what you want to hear at all. I just tell it like it is. Whatever. Um, so when love isn't present, the absorption of truth is absolutely impossible. So... The thing about love is it impacts the choices um, that we make to re to receive love. So if we have the presence of love within us, then what it does is it allows the choice to receive love. So if I'm a loving person, right, I have love within myself, and I need some advice from someone, and I go up to that person and I ask them about whatever it is that I need to ask them about, and and then uh, um, then I ask them and, and, and they tell me if I have love in my if I have the presence of love then I'm going to receive whatever it is that they're saying but if I don't I'm going to be very resistant to what they're saying and if it doesn't fall in line with what I'm currently believing so if I'm blaming someone for something, I'm not gonna wanna hear it's your fault. I'm not gonna wanna hear the part that I played in all of this. So there's a difference. So if you have the presence of love, you're open to receiving uh, truth. And the thing is like, if love is present, you can still have a conversation, even if truth is different than the, the other person. So if love is present, you can still have a conversation and you'll be okay with it, even if the truth is different than yours. That's it. So you can see this plays a huge role in, in your soul, in terms of what your soul is experiencing. Like it doesn't matter if it's truth or error. As long as you are having, if you both have love, if you both have the presence of love, then your soul is growing. It is, it is expanding because the conversation that you're having is in love. And your soul feels that. And your soul loves that. It loves to feel love. It knows. It knows. And so even if, if we're talking about something, if I'm having a conversation and... If just not not the truth, let's just say it's not the truth, but hey, you know, we're having a good conversation, we're respectful of one another, um, and there's just love there, and we're respecting each other's uh, views and opinions, then it's a, it's a conversation that is in love, and it's so beneficial to the soul. The soul will remember the conversation, it will remember the feeling that it had during the conversation, and this is what's important. An intellectual will look at the intellectual aspect and base it on that. Whether or not the information is true or not. But that's not why we're here. We're here to live in love. Look, you people. We're here to live in love. That's it. Live in love. Live in love. Let me see my opening. Um, so, yeah. So, let's see. Um... So if 
love is not present. There is an automatic impediment to any truth entering the soul. So when I talked about this um, in a previous video, when you have something that is within you and it's blocking you from absorbing any truth, that means there's an impediment. There's an emotional injury there. There's also a belief that is an error that is preventing new information or present. If the presence of love is not there, then it's an automatic impediment to truth. Period. That's just how it works. That's how the soul works. You have to ask God why. <laughs> and if you did, I'm sure the answer you would get is because everything is based on love. Your whole existence is based on absorbing love, experiencing love, having love. It's all based on this. You, you're going to hear me say love, 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 love. Because that is the reason why we're here. That's it. There is no other reason why we're here. Everything that you do will be summed up with love or the lack of it. That's it. That is it. So, what, like I said, what's the point on speaking truth when love isn't present to be absorbed? You know? So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Because the thing is, like, when we when we don't have love present, we're like totally ignoring the whole reason why we dis we discuss truth in the first place. That's the only reason why you're discussing truth. For love. That's it. That's it. Now, some people lie to try to get love. <laughs> that that happens a lot where especially if you're trying to win someone over because you like someone you'll tell a lie in order to ensure that that person likes you back and possibly loves you in return so you'll start telling these untruths well that is going to backfire sooner or later that will that will be exposed the truth will be exposed <clears throat> absolutely it will that's why relationships break up. <laughs> That's why they break up. Um, so, okay, I already, okay, so, let's see, I already said that. Ah, okay. So, a person who honors this loving principle of, of the soul's free will and wishes to share truth all the time they're only able to oh, hold on a second I need to get over hold on alright so um, what I was going to say next is a person who honors the loving principle of the soul's free will and wishes to share the truth at all times will be able to share truth about yourself if and only if they have learned in their soul the truth about themselves. So, if someone is teaching you or sharing a truth with you, what they will be able to do, I mean, when they're sharing a truth about yourself, the only way they can really share a truth like that is if they have learned the truth about themselves. That's the only way. And they will not only be able to tell you the truth about yourself, but they can tell you why. And here's the difference. Uh oh, here's the difference. There are many people who can say, "Oh, um, you're just you're." Uh, let's see, what would be a good example? Um, you're mean. Someone says you're mean, or you're an asshole, or whatever. And then you ask them, well, how are you an asshole? Well, how, or I'm sorry, how am I mean? How am I an asshole? And they, well, you just are. <laughs> oh my gosh, people, they do this, it cracks me up. So, 
that means that they have no understanding on a soul level whatsoever. It's all intellectual. Like they know you're being a certain way, but they don't know why you're being that way. This is the difference. Now someone who understands on a soul level will be able to tell you the truth about yourself and explain to you why that is because they understand it they're as truth within themselves already. This is why they're able to tell you your truth and explain it to you, meaning why you're that way. So understand if someone is sharing a truth with you or about you, I should say, if they truly have it with their truth, with that truth within their soul, it's because they have already experienced it. They know about it and they can explain why you are doing what you're doing. And that means that you have they have the presence of love within themselves first. Because someone who doesn't have the presence of love within themselves won't acknowledge any of these things within themselves. They'll be in denial about it. So they wouldn't have any information to give you other than calling you whatever, a mean person or a-hole. That's the difference. Um, so we have to have uh, the presence of love not just for other people but for ourselves first. So people who have condemning thoughts of themselves, they don't have the presence of love. There are spirit influences that, there are people who have spiritual influences by entities that are attached to them that put thoughts in their mind that tell them that they're not, they're not good enough or they're unworthy or they're ugly or whatever it is. The only way that can happen is because, or the only way that that, that can happen is if they lack the presence of love for themselves. So there is no self-love present. Only people who have spiritual influences do not possess self-love. They do not possess it. Which is why these entities can come in and attach themselves. If they had love for themselves, these entities would not be able to come in and influence them in any way, shape, or form. All right? So, we have to love ourselves first. And before we even try to attempt to love another, we have to love ourselves first. We have to. Or else that relationship is gonna fail or it's, gonna, it's just gonna be a miserable time. Um, if you're trying to develop a relationship and you don't have this, you're going to have a lot of a lot of issues. And ultimately, there's either going to be a, a, a long time of abuse or it's going to end. One or the other. So either you'll stay in it and it'll be abusive or you'll leave. And then you guys will just argue and you guys will break up. But you have to have self-love. <clears throat> And if you had self-love to begin with, you wouldn't even enter in a relation, into a relationship that would be abusive. The only way an abusive, uh, abusive um, things can happen is if you don't have self-love and you enter into uh, a relationship. That means you, you just, you don't have it. So therefore you don't see anything, uh, you just don't see the signs. And the first, the first sign, um, generally is seen well before it happens. There's little things that you notice in a person that let you know that uh, abusive tendencies are there. And if you don't see them, that's because you don't have self-love. Because love allows you to see many things. Many, many, many things. Which is what I said in the beginning of the video. When you have self, when you have love, the presence of love, it gives you a power and that power is literally a superpower because it allows you to detect anything that is unloving. Anything that is unloving. 
from the start. You don't have to experience it to see it. That's the kind of power that the presence of love gives you. So it would be in your best interest to learn how to love yourself so that it's present, so that your life experiences are different, they're more healthy, all right? So that's it for presents. Um, I hope it made sense. I think it made sense. Um, it was actually a short topic, but I wanted to um, kind of uh, be redundant a bit in this video because it's really important. I mean, it's something just like, okay, yeah, the presence of love, but it is really... Oh my, I can't tell you how important I can't tell you how important all these things are you know all these things that I'm talking about they're so important I know some people will dismiss them some people will actually utilize them some people will try to get it and they don't get it but hey like I said it's in your toolbox just allow it to be in your toolbox and when you're ready it'll come out and it'll be understood alright so there's one more topic and then that's it and I will try to get the end of that uh, previous video up um, oh maybe I can do it maybe I can do it today I'm gonna get a haircut all right so anyway uh, remember you are loved and I will talk to you later bye now